So we're going 160 now. And 180 coming up. So today we are testing my friend's BMW Z4. It's a four-year-old car, or so I'm told. So we're gonna go test drive it today. Actually, I test drove it yesterday, but the problem was after I washed the interior cushions and the helmet, I connected the cables wrongly so uh, there was no sound <laughs> so i have to do this whole review again okay guys so today we are doing this review of the car uh this is uh, basically a bmw a beamer and it's the z4 model 2012. uh he still has the red number plates because he has been very lazy to change them but other than that Red number plate means a new car, but it's actually a four-year-old car. And uh, yeah, so this is the key fob. I'll show you how it fits inside uh, once we get in. So this is a 2.0 liter four-cylinder turbocharged vehicle. Uh, it's the S-Drive 2.0i, 20i you could say. And with large rims, I think these are 19 or 20 inches. It's a nice, sweet-looking car. I've always liked this design shape. The, the cockpit is very much on the back where the wheels meet. And the engine is in the front. It, look, it looks really awesome, actually. The roof can also open on the back, and it folds right in there. So we're going to test that out, how many seconds it does it. I read online that it does it in 15 seconds. We'll count that. Uh, also, I read that this car does 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.9 seconds. We'll test that too. Um, it also says online that uh, the specs are about top speed of 147 miles per hour, something like that. I'm not sure about that and I won't test that. This is uh, street, um, street driving, so I'll do probably 160, 180 max, but that's about it, depending on the traffic. Right, so this is a pretty sweet looking car. Uh, I've always liked this shape. So let's get in the, inside the vehicle, see what we have. As you can see, I'm wearing my helmet because <laughs> that's how it is. This is the only camera I got. Oh, okay, wow, so the seat is really low. Uh, it's got some memory effect on the seats but I won't change that because it's his personal vehicle so we're just gonna do a couple of minutes of driving and reviewing the vehicle so how does this work you put, put it the slot in here click it turns on press it on the brake press the start button and that's that oh turn down the volume so here is the infotainment system uh, I don't know how to use this. It's just like the, you gotta scroll it up and down and it goes up and down here. You can change the menu, go to something else. But I won't play with this. I'll just leave the music off. I don't wanna... It's gonna take me like one hour to figure this out, so... No thanks. Steering wheel is nice and uh, comfortable to hold. It's got the pedal shifts here and it's got the semi-automatic here. So you can choose between normal automatic drive, uh, switching gears like this, or using the paddle shift. I'll use the paddle shift usually. It feels more comfortable while driving, making you more focused on the road. The interior is very nice, uh, nicely designed. Um, it's not plasticky uh, type of feel. It's not like, like this. It's basically it's nice um, synthetic uh, leather covered all over here also on the doors that's pretty cool got tweeter system here over here I think in the back there's some speakers yes you can see right there um, the backspace is not too bad yeah and you get like a little holder here oh look at that holder here for cups and stuff probably that's a phone parking brake is here uh, you know it's, it's a very nice design for a small uh, two-seater vehicle it's quite comfortable to sit inside 
not as cramped as a Lotus uh, or a Tesla Roadster, but it's a, it's nice. It's nice. Very quiet engine. It's a 2.0, so don't expect it to make amazing noises. It's not a V6 or a V8. So here is the comfort mode and sport mode. I'll show you guys what it does in uh, comfort mode, and then we'll do sport mode. I will not turn off the traction control because this is number one not my car number two you need to get used to a vehicle before you go uh, full on with it uh, it's also got Bluetooth here it's got it's got this I think this is like the interior aircon I don't know why this button is here it should be here I don't know what the hell that is and then it's got this it looks like CD changer or some shit like that I got no idea the cruise control lever is here the turn signals are on my left hand and the wipers are on my right hand. Uh, if you buy a Toyota or a Honda in Thailand, this is the opposite. So the turn signal is on the right and the wipers are on the left. So that can be quite confusing for people that are uh, living here in Thailand and switching to a European vehicle because the, the, the turn signals. I always mistake that. So that's a little bit tricky there. Um, it's got automatic headlights, that's pretty interesting. So let's go for a ride. How do we go for a ride? You press your foot on the brake, and you press this button here on the right hand side, and then you push it on drive. And let's go. All right. Here we go, here we go. Oh my god, it's traffic. I'm going to U-turn immediately, there's no traffic on the main road. Immediately, what you can notice is that uh in my 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 eyesight is right here and it goes straight that way the steering wheel is kind of blocking my view <laughs> so i really gotta sit up straight like this to get a better point of view and actually see the hood and uh, see the where where how fat this front is <laughs> but it's probably due to the memory effect of the seat so not too worried about this too much Right, so um, it's a very smooth drive. It's, it's in comfort mode right now. It's quite smooth, quite relaxing. This car is a fairly decent ride. Remember, it is a sports, sports car, two-seater. So it this doesn't have the best suspension in the world. It's more stiff suspension, so it's probably more for track use. So we are in comfort mode now, so I'll show you guys over here it says comfort mode and you have something called sport mode which kicks in the RPM much faster and then you have sport plus mode which turns off the traction control but I don't know what else it does so I'm not going to use this mode I'm just gonna go only to sport mode and use that uh, as an example. Also, as you can see, can you guys see that? Um, it's going into miles per hour, and the smaller numbers are kilometers per hour. Um, that's a little bit confusing for me, because most of my life has been kilometers per hour vehicles where I have lived in the world, so I'm not used to the miles per hour thing. That's how you enter a highway. <laughs> Give some speed. So in sport mode, it does catch on quicker. Um, but of course, you have to press your foot down quite a lot in order for it to change gears and kick into speed. So it takes about like, see that? That was about one second. <laughs> it takes about one second to change that gear and go into a speed. So I'll show it to you guys one more time. Here it goes my foot. And there it goes. See that? So it's it's kind of weird in my opinion. But yeah. Okay, so let's try. We pass that Lexus fairly easily. So for a 2.0 it's not bad speed at all you know it's got some good um, good throttle good torque because of that turbo 
gives us a very nice uh, line of power so we're going 160 now and 180 coming up that was almost 180 170 something so enough, it's a fun car guys it's a fun car uh, you, you all know me I don't like gas cars but I never said I don't like the cars I don't like the engines I love the cars they're amazing look how beautiful it is comfortable I love cars I just don't like the powertrain and that delay that I was talking about and the sound is a 2.0 guys it's not a v6 right it's not like um, the Mercedes uh, uh, Gullwing car what is that one called I forgot the AMG one it makes a sweet sound right I would agree with you guys but this one it's a 2.0 it makes almost exactly the same sound as a Honda Accord 2.0 except that there's a turbo whine I'm not sure you can hear it on the voice but yeah it's that turbo whine that I love a lot about this uh, turbo turbocharged vehicles but like I said the sound is exactly like a Honda Accord it's very very much similar I, I keep slipping these seats are leather slippery seats I keep slipping down <laughs> like wow it's a fairly nice uh, vehicle for the price in Thailand I think it's like 4.5 million baht for this this is the cheapest model you can get and um, uh, is it worth it I don't think so I, I really don't think it's worth this money in the States hell yeah it's definitely worth to have this car because it's not that expensive yeah don't decide the last minute look at this what what are you doing Jesus Ooh, some people man okay let's go pass from here it's a nice nice pickup I didn't even reach the red line I'm going 160 already not bad hmm I don't know if if it's true what they said that is 6.9 seconds I think it might be a little bit faster especially if you put it in sport mode not bad not bad I'm not sure about the consumption it doesn't tell you how many kilometers per liter is doing maybe there's a way you can change the settings so you can see it but I don't know how I don't know how how to do this how to change our setting it's very very strange for me let's see what we can do here change the gear all right let's go to another one nice what I can say about this car is pretty interesting that the um, the, the changing of the gear is way smoother man it does it properly right between each gear it just goes not bad like this very slight delay you know that's a pretty good semi-automatic transmission I'll show you this nice um, big bike shop all right let's see here we're gonna park on this side Ooh, I'm gonna do a terrible parking like a BMW driver okay and then press this button yep and then that's it it's parked all right let's see here we go I'm gonna press this button and we're gonna open up all right three two one go one two three four five six seven what the hell is eight nine 10 11 12 13 14 15 click that's done so it's about 15 seconds that's pretty cool nice open air loving it pretty cool car man 
Let's see how it looks from the outside. Open the door. Okay. All right. So this is how it looks. Oh, nice open roof. It's probably where it locks. Oh yeah. Cool car. So this is the dealership, the Honda Big Wing. So they basically have all of the uh, Honda bikes here, big bikes. Cool buddies of mine. I'll come visit them later for another review. All right. Let's put it back. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay, here it goes. That's so funny, man. Giant trunk just opens up. What? Boom. And then click there. And the window goes down. Uh-huh. And that's it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think that's freaking awesome. I've always wanted a car like this that can do that. I don't mean the soft top cars. I hate soft top because that thing sounds like it's flimsy and it would leak and shit. Uh, even if, if, if we had like cold weather like in the States winter. Oh my god, that must be so freezing inside. So nope, not soft top. I like hard top like this, like a proper roof. Yes, it adds more weight to the vehicle, but it's much better, much more durable. So this is a pretty sweet looking car. I am, of course, impressed. But would I buy this car myself if I had the money? No, I would not. You know what I would buy and it would definitely be a Roadster or the next version of the Roadster for sure. 4.5 million baht is just too much money for a car like this in my opinion. So if you guys don't know Thai money for every dollar it's 35 baht. So 4.5 million baht is close to 140,000 dollars something like that. That's a lot for this car. In the states is what? About 50, 60,000 or maybe less, right? definitely worth it then isn't it <laughs> for hundred twenty thousand dollars guys I could buy a brand new Roadster and the used Roadster I've seen like the lowest was about fifty thousand dollars it's not not bad prices for a Roadster but it's the taxes here in Thailand that's pretty terrible thank you to my friend he let me borrow this vehicle for a little review he actually called me up which was funny he's like the day before on a Wednesday, he called me up and he's like, Tony, I got my BMZ4 back. You want to take it for a spin? Make a review? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I didn't even know what car it is. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not a BMW dude. So I have no idea. Like, oh, Z4. Oh, it doesn't sound like an M4 or M3. What the hell is going on? But yeah, why not? I was super excited when I saw it turbocharged yeah I freaking love turbos it's my thing I prefer them over superchargers all right let's take it back we'll take this u-turn and we'll come back on the other side one more thing I want to talk about before I uh, give back the car is the differences between comfort and sport I didn't try sport plus right but I did is comfort and sport so comfort basically it takes longer for the engine to kick in into another gear because it's at low rpm if you change it to sport mode so the rpm immediately changes over to rpm so uh, 2000 so uh, it basically gets that you know faster response but of course you're gonna burn more fuel yeah that's the difference but it, th I think that's the only difference. I don't think, I doubt it, that it, uh, what, turns the booster of the turbo more on or something. Or, uh, I don't know. It, I don't think it does anything else. Or f what, the fuel injectors send more fuel to the uh, uh, car? No, I don't think so. How do we turn off the car? You press the stop button. And then you... Go like this and everything turns off and then you slide out the key 
and that's about it. Oop. <sighs> Pretty sweet ride. See that? I like that. I want to show you that again. So when you open, the window goes down, and when you close it, the window goes back up. That's pretty sweet. That's why I love cars like this. Little coupes with the roof. That's awesome, guys. I want to thank Pirapong for his car. That's the man. Thank you so much. Awesome car. See you in the next one. <laughs> Bye, guys.